Hello and welcome, you're watching Head to Head on UATV and I'm Alice Gerdjuk. Today we're talking about European integration in Ukraine. According to officials, this is one of the top strategic goals for the Ukrainian state. A recent survey showed that Ukraine's accession to the European Union and NATO also has wide public support. So what has already been done and what else needs to be achieved on this path? To talk more about this, we are joined in the studio today by Olga Stefanishina, Ukraine's Director of the Government Office for Coordination of European and Euro-Atlantic Integration. Hello and thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you. It's a great pleasure to have such discussion here today. It's a pleasure to have you here. So, mm, let's start. Mm, what pluses could you outline in Ukraine's commitment to Ukraine-EU association agreement? Uh, first of all, uh, if we're talking about the commitments, it's clear to say that European integration is the sum, the vector of the development of Ukraine that really unites all the nation of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And this is something which is not really common to the practice that has been here back in Ukraine back in 2013, where we had to choose and had enormous discussions about different vectors of development of our country. So I think that the, the, the principal victory and the principal benefit of the course of Ukraine to European integration is that it is widely supported by the Ukrainian population. It is uh, almost undisputable that this is the right way of development of the country. And it's important to say that it's not about geopolitical or geographical approach. It's about the real standards of living and uh, the real benefits for each citizen, for the companies, for business, for goods, for Ukrainian goods, and all the four freedoms that we can integrate into within the European Union. Mm -hmm. Are there any polls or any data, um, well, maybe any surveys conducted around Ukraine to, to, to prove that basically the population is very supportive about your integration? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, today, uh, the uh, one of the think tanks, U uh, Ukrainian think tanks supported by European Union and uh, uh, USA project, they presented the survey, which has been conducted in six, uh, six cities of Ukraine, uh, showing the difference of the perception of the European integration, but there is no clear negative approach to the European integration. Most of the people really support integration of Europe into European Union and membership in the European Union. Most of people support the economic integration and taking all the benefits from functioning of tree trade area between our parties. And some of the people, and it's only 15 percent among all of the people that have been uh, participating in the surveys who have uh, no clear position of whether uh, they support European integration or whether they support some other options. So, so it, it is a very good result mm -hmm. and it is public and um, except of this one that I've noticed there have been a lot of surveys different think tanks that have presented from Ukrainian side but both from European side mm -hmm. so at least uh, three times higher the level of support of European and Euro-Atlantic integration in Ukraine since 2013 uh, three times higher yes this at is least. a very great result right. I would say well and um, of course, by having this commitment with Europe, Ukraine has a lot of demands and requirements from the European Union. Uh, which ones are already fulfilled? Uh, yes, and it wouldn't be very important to say that Ukraine's association agreement is the biggest and most ambitious agreement that EU has ever signed with the third country. Basically, why, why is it the biggest? Like, didn't uh, they tr trust very much in uh, Ukraine, uh, or well, was it very risky back then? Uh, because uh, from the very beginning of the negotiations, Ukraine was very ambitious towards uh, towards the level of commitment we can take to ourselves to move closer closer for European integration. And and back in 2007, when Ukraine started the negotiations, already in 2008, Ukraine joined the WTO organization, World Trade Organization, which have been the real push for boosting uh, the negotiations on free trade area as a very comprehensive trade area, because Ukraine has become the member of this organization, which opened basically also the door for the wider agenda. So, and, uh, um, uh, and when we're talking about Ukraine's uh, progress and implementation of the association agreement, we can say that it's not as uh, as good as it could have been, and it's not, of course, 100 percent, but still uh, we can mention some of the principal points. The first one is that uh, EU agenda covers all the sphere of public 
public policies, uh, which means that all the spheres were reformed and transformed according to the association agreement, which is stipulated in the government plan of priority actions. Mm -hmm. The other option is that we have uh, uh, principle four areas where we believe that we can make a huge breakthrough already within this uh, year and next year based on the progress in legal approximation that we did this uh, this year already. These are the digital integration, integration in energy, gas and electricity sector, customs cooperation and uh, of course cooperation in sphere of justice and home affairs with, which have reforms and which serve the ground for the visa liberalization. So these are the four principal areas we have where we have done a big progress so far mm -hmm. and we can count on close integration with the EU uh, within upcoming two years. Is there any data how did the um, economy, how did Ukraine prosper economically throughout this time since, uh, since we signed the uh, Ukraine-EU Association agreement, uh, uh, GDP growth and uh, well, um, implementation of the association agreement is not that much related to, to the, the general GDP growth, of course. But uh, if we're talking about bilateral trade starting from 2014 and until now, European Union has become and is until now the biggest trading partner of Ukraine, uh, which have not been the situation back in 2014, where, where the Russia was such partner. And uh, uh, it is the normal data for not only for Ukraine, but, but for all the countries of uh, Eastern Partnership, in particular for Georgia and for Armenia, the figures are much uh, less ambitious than they are here. So the, the bilateral trade decreases uh, generally uh, per couple of percents uh, each quarter. So it's, it's a very huge uh, number. So but then say. it directly influences GDP also. But yes, also, but I, I, I'm not sure that I can cover the direct yeah, formula okay, okay, on that. Okay. I, just want, I just want to remind a quote from uh, Ivan Miklas, the chief economic advisor to Ukraine's prime minister, and he is also the chairman of the strategic advisory group for support of Ukrainian reforms. He said in this studio, quote, that this country, Ukraine, has the potential for a confident economic growth of 6 to 7 percent per year minimum. Um, well, currently we have like 2.5 percent, something around that. What's your take on this uh, uh, Well, uh, we believe it, it is also related to cooperation with the International Monetary Fund and, and further financial support of yeah, Ukraine assistance. with this uh, uh, regard. But uh, uh, the statistics is very positive. So uh, even according to the forecast of the International Monetary Fund, uh, fund it wasn't uh, considered that Ukraine will uh, get 3, 3 percent plus GDP growth within uh, uh, last year, this year, and next year, but we have uh, obtained three plus percent GDP growth already last year. So this is mm -hmm. even going before the forecasts of so the International Money uh, Monetary Fund, and because we're we're moving towards uh, growing back the agenda to the numbers that you've all outlined already upcoming years. Six and seven. Yes. Well, okay, but um, what needs to be done for that? I mean, um, we have already a lot of reforms um, launched, and they are they are already in the process of implementation. Um, what still needs to be done? What pluses and minuses can you outline? And maybe um, I don't know what obstacles could you also outline on Ukraine's path towards this integration. Uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, for, for the last three years, Ukraine basically uh, implemented the association agreement on, on the unilateral basis, which meant that parliament voted the legislations which the government had to implement. Uh, but to go into real free trade area and to, to establish it not only for those goods which are already exported to the European Union, we are working closely with the European Commission to launch the official evaluation of the progress of Ukraine, which will then open the door for forming the specific roadmaps which, uh, of the actions uh, which are needed to be taken to integrate and to become a part of EU internal market or at least to establish the single regulatory space. For example, in this uh, regard, we have already almost a single regulatory spa space for functioning of all types of business, of opening the data about business and, uh, and uh, transparency of the information about the country, and which opens the door for investments, uh, because it's clear if uh, EU knows that Ukraine has the same regulatory space, each company knows that there will be no obstacles for doing business there, at least the rules will be the same. Mm -hmm. So this is the same approach we're taking, for example, to customs operation, 
op operations because we want to integrate into EU transit system, which would allow to uh, use the benefits of, uh, let's say, visa-free movement of uh, uh, of uh, cargo between the Ukrainian and EU territories, and which also uh, will establish necessary links for business. So, uh, so all of these reforms would be really targeted to growing and setting the conditions for economic growth and becoming a part of a bigger market and the best market in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very great. But sometimes, uh, well, Ukrainian officials, they do understand what changes they need to do in the country. But sometimes um, maybe they're not quite aware of the mechanisms or tools that they can use for that. Is there any consulting work uh, being done to help them out in this? Uh, oh, that's basically the 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 key challenge we have in terms of moving faster with the Euro integrational and Euro Atlantic agenda because uh, we all standing ready to do reforms, but we have not always have a good capacity in the institutions to deliver upon the agenda, and uh, it's really the the challenge that we have that we uh, we are very clear about the goals we want to achieve, but we are not always have the necessary instruments, knowledge, and capacity to deliver and to, to plan and to ensure this goal is is uh, received. And uh, this is something where I have to refer to the reform of public administration, which have been launched in the ministries, mm -hmm. uh, where the directorates for strategic planning and European integration were established. And it to have frozen the part of European integration as part of strategic development of all the policies in a country, but not like uh, an international activity. But we know that Ukrainian and European bureaucracies are very strong, and that's why together with the German government we launched the um, uh, EU Association Lab, which uh -huh. is a, a hub for, uh, for institutions, public administration, uh, other officials, uh, civil society experts, EU experts, to draw upon and to deliver ambitious proje projects based on those commitments we already have in the association agreement and this is something that would let them uh, dig out from this bureaucracy they are uh, being um, settled for 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 the many years and to be more ambitious and to know that there is a support of uh, uh, expert community to help them to deliver on these reforms. And we believe that together with all those instruments that we've already established uh, within Ukrainian bureaucracy at the political and institutional level, this hub would, would serve as a very informal uh, st stage for, for discussion for ambitious projects and for support in terms of their implementation. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us more about this association lab? Are there any priority topics uh, of surveys and research and also consultation for, well, basically uh, launched. Oh, well, uh, well uh, from the very beginning, uh, we had a, a very close discussion with the German government and GIZ consulting group, uh, uh, because the government office I'm chairing is the principal beneficiary of this project. Um, and uh, we wanted to concentrate on these four priority areas that I've outlined in before, the digital agenda, energy agenda, customs agenda, and justice and home affairs agenda, because we have already done a lot in this sphere. And if we we're looking back to the technical side of the pro process. Uh, we've delivered a lot in the legal approximation on building institutional capacity, but now we're at the stage where we have to form the ambitious goals of closer integration with the EU market, of uh, fulfilling the practical conditions and filling the and forming the inspiry of all the uh, Ukrainian country to move closer with the integration with the EU with these areas. And that's why the four sectors I've outlined the uh, these are the key sectors uh, uh, which are put into the agenda of functioning of the EU Association Lab and uh, um, a week ago the call for proposal from public institutions have been launched and we're looking forward to gather all the proposals uh, together and to see what could be the real ambitious uh, projects uh, which could be then implemented with support of our German colleagues. So basically the activists will provide you with some well some draft of uh, drafts of mechanisms yes. um, how to change the processes, not only about bureaucracy, but about all the, the all the processes, economic processes in the country to to uh, to comply yes. in order to comply with the European yes. standards. So, so this this might be uh, the projects of different scope and and uh, uh, and ambition. I would say so, starting from a very technical uh, decision, w which might influence the the overall uh, pro project, and finishing with the very ambitious goals uh, like a roadmap of integration into some sphere of economics. So. 
this could be, th there is no clear leverage between that. But then in the end of this project, well, with this uh, association lab, are you going to select the most successful projects yes. and then uh, propose it to the government? And what, what happens next? Uh, yes, we're selecting the most successful uh, projects, uh, which uh, among those who will apply. Mm -hmm. And uh, the condition is that these projects should be based on the association agreement. Yes. So, and this would be one of the criteria for selections, of course, for selection of the project. So, uh, it would be uh, not hard for government to support its implementation if they are based on the association agreement and those commitments which are there. And uh, it's clear that uh, the participant of each project project would be not only experts in civil society, but the representatives of public administration and ministry. So this would be something that would ministry would have to do anyway, but it would be something which would be inspired with the, with the expert opinion and with the informal and by communication. Civic activists also, yes, yeah. yes. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for your contribution to this process and thanks for this interesting conversation to also. Thank you. This was Olga Stefanishina, Director of the Government Office for Coordination of European and Euro-Atlantic Integration. Thank you for watching Head to Head and stay tuned for more with UATV.